Aaron Wambasak has finally signed for West Ham from Man United uh, for 15 million. The logjam Man United side of things has kind of finally broken. Yeah, can we can we get an insight into whether he's decided to waive a lot of money or did it, is it how, how did that kind of impasse get overcome mm. in the end? I don't really know. I, I think it might be down to the fact that he... Uh, I appreciate he's been at United for a while, but mm. he wouldn't have been on like big, big wages for someone who... Mm came over considering he came from Crystal Palace. Yeah. And it was very early in his Palace career. Yeah. But I do wonder if, um, I suppose, yeah, maybe there, there's a, a clause in there that it's X much now and this much going forward after next year, depending on where they finish and stuff like that. Right. It always feels like these are problems to be solved, right? And yeah, the, exactly. The Maguire, yeah. But the Maguire one wasn't solved, was it? Which no, why, um, no, because that was astronomical from the start. Mm. Yeah. So right. well, that, the, the, that is a problem. There was a lot of um, uh, West Ham stalwarts that have kind of either let or had their um, uh, contracts sort of uh, run out uh, at the end of them. And so they've lost a couple of players, but this is West Ham's seventh permanent signing of the summer. They've got uh, Fulkrug, obviously, uh, Max Kilman, who seemed surprised that he was even on the move from where he came well, he, from. He's, he's just such a solid type, though, isn't he? Like, mm. He plays. He seems like he plays every game. Yeah. yeah. And and West Ham have lost a couple of centre backs. They lost Dog Bonner and I think one other. They're going to lose mm. Zuma as well, maybe. Potentially. Yeah. Um, and so it makes sense they brought him in. He's just one of those guys. And there is still a place for this in the Premier League, despite all the bluster and all the kind of big stories. Yeah. There's a place for someone who just comes in and he plays every game at centre back, and you don't really notice him in a negative way Paul and Dummett pick him up Paul Dummett <laughs> <laughs> this is not a short window Paul if you Dummett. sell these different new cars oh, beautiful boys <laughs> are you going back to that time where you could call up the radio and just sell like your fridge freezer <laughs> <laughs> could you do that yeah. back in the day so on Sunrise Radio which was the uh, Sunrise South, radio? it was a South Asian right. uh, station um, well, in, where, in, in West London I think in London generally. Right, yeah, okay. you'd, all, you'd always see it kicking around. Yeah, so um, and like there'd be various like because there's so, so many different languages in mm. South, specifically like South, uh, you know, like Brown South Asia. I'll put it that right. way. Mm. Um, that you'd all have your own slot. Um, so like my parents would listen to it and like kind of wait for the Tamil bit essentially. Ah. Uh, but there was something, something called the uh, Sunrise Radio Swap Shop, <laughs> so which happened so on a Saturday, and you would call up. up. Yeah. That's that sounds awesome. fucking great. I mean, yeah. Donaldson, you'd be all over that. I, I would love to be. The, the a man, man who lives on Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take it analog, baby. Yeah. There's, a, there's a man trying to lowball me at the moment on something I'm selling a table. Um, it's, it's very upsetting. But um, I could probably get rid of a Crescencio um, Somerville if I wanted. Yeah. <laughs> He's well, also joined up by Sam's Rags. They, they, they have quietly sort of gone about their rebuilding their squad in quite a sort of tidy way. Yeah, I think so. I, like, I, I would even go as far to say that. Aaron Wan-Bissaka is probably the weakest of their signings, in part because they have been really good. And I think West Ham fans will actually end up having the same frustrations that Manchester United have, fans mm. have with Wan-Bissaka, and that he's defensively solid, but going forward, not very good. It doesn't and, offer anything. Um, yeah. Doesn't really offer much, yeah. yeah. Um, but, but, and that was kind of part of the problem, really. Like, when you, um, when you think about it, like... They, the frustration emanated from the fact that they felt like two separate parts of a team. They mm. had like the attack and then the defence. And I wondered if Lopetegui was looking to, I suppose, ease them in a bit. Because Kilman is that player. Kilman yeah. loves carrying the ball out of defence, a good passer. Um, but wan doesn't quite tally with that. But at the same time, you know, they look really impressive in terms of you know the players they've recruited and what they seem to be trying to do. Can I, can I have a go at explain uh, kind of... Un- Maybe arguing that it'll be a good move for them and why that they've they've got him and 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 it's not necessarily a negative story for that reason. the The idea is that like West Ham set of challenges are very different to Man United set of challenges. I know they only finished like quite close to each other last season, but what Man United are trying to do um, is is slightly different to what West Ham are trying to do. And for Man United and their standards, they mm. really struggled to score goals last season United, didn't they? They didn't, I mean, they yeah. 57 yeah, yeah. goals in the league, which for them is, is given their ambitions, is really poor. And then wan can become something of a lightning rod for that. But it's like, because you you automatically want to go, well, he's not offering anything going forward and we yeah, can't score yeah, yeah. that. Mm. So then never mind that Bruno Fernandes is creating more chances than De Bruyne. You know, and, you know, and, and, and he's, I think he's created more chances than anyone since he's been in the Premier League. United just weren't scoring. With, with West Ham, 
They scored more goals than Man United last season anyway, but also there's going to be loads more games with West Ham where they're going to have to be good defensively to, to, to achieve their ambitions. Mm. Like mm-hmm. One in every three games might well be a really tricky away game that you're not going to fancy them to win. It's a different set of circumstances. That, if that's the case, then you want a really solid one-on-one defender who can keep a shape well and, and be very athletic and be very disciplined. And Wamba Saka is, Saka is definitely that, especially given the fact that West Ham considered a huge amount of goals last season. I think it was only the bottom three conceded more than them so yeah. I think there's a reason there's, there's definitely a joined up way they're going about it particularly when you see it in context with Kilman as well who's like a really solid centre back type so I actually think it's a really good signing mm. I don't think he's going to turn into you know I can you know prime Ashley Cole overnight but he is going to be good at what he's good at and he's been consistent at that over time I think it's going to take a few a couple of months to sort of make everyone joke so there are a lot of signings and we've seen with clubs like that who sign a lot of players at the same time it just takes a little bit of time to, for everyone yeah the only exception to that would probably be Chelsea I'd say <laughs> 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 well, uh, speaking of uh, Man United, Vish uh, Delict has uh, signed for United. Of, uh, I'll drive him there myself because I'll have to. Um, <laughs> and uh, Kazuma was set to join UAE side Shabab Al Akli on International Cat Day last week. Mm. That's uh, a lovely little bit of calendar checking. But yeah. he failed. He failed his medical. Yeah. Uh, no, I, th- I think it was... Oh, yes, I think his medical fell through. So that cat had the right, last yeah. laugh. Yeah, but the way that's framed was like the two are linked. The cat scratched him. Yeah, or, or like, you know, the doctor went, Mr. Zuma, you're... Sorry, you're, you're, your Achilles are made of twine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, 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 cat, that cat scratched his Achilles and like... Yeah, tore it with its claw. Maybe that's Ooh, why he attacked and had it. the last laugh. No, you afterwards. Just don't know. Oh, you've just last... got furballs in your joints. So, that's, so, that, <laughs> so that cat has done something wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah for, for my money, <laughs> it, when all said and done, that cat has done something. How Not did, wrong, but has done how something. How did Zuma get cat aids? Anyway, <laughs> um, quiet window elsewhere in the Premier League has to be said. Liverpool cannot sign a player at the moment. Is it just them? Nobody buying into the new Liverpool project without Jurgen Klopp. It's weird, isn't What's it? What's happening here? I, I wonder if it's a, a wait and see approach. Mm. And, I, and I suppose wait and see, you don't really get the other side of it, do you? Because if it goes well, then they can They're go out you. and it doesn't necessarily mean the same players are, are yeah. free and whatever. But just the way it's framed and, and just generally the frustration that you seem to get from from Liverpool fans, in part because of how pre-season has panned out as well right. because I think Arnie Slot naturally has gone right I want to do this this and this mm. and you can kind of gauge the players he trusts and it doesn't seem like I think there was you know there's a suggestion that like maybe he wants like a longer term replacement or uh, you know a longer term replacement for Endo say right. mm. and at the same time you're like well Endo was really good last year do they play the same positions per se and mm. now that it's come out that Zuma Mendy has said no for very understandable reasons like the food and the weather in San Sebastian. <laughs> <laughs> it's mad that like, because that, so right, I think I'm right in saying that that's basically what the club's turned and said to him. Like, by mm. the way, it's, you know, it's fucking lovely here. And like, oh yeah. But beyond that, I, I do think there is, there is a sense of like, for, yeah, a, a little bit of wariness from Liverpool fans because obviously you're playing a big figure in Klopp, but also like something like this suggests he doesn't quite have the pull of a club. Well, I, maybe, maybe, he's, maybe he's on a promise for a Basque radio station and he just wants to stick around to see if he's uh, got his. Uh, so he can sell a fridge. He's selling an iron in board. Yeah, you always need a fridge down that part of the world. <laughs> um, uh, it's interesting because I remember Melissa Reddy was reporting that, you know, from the start when Slot took over, she was saying he is quite a thoughtful guy and he really wants a chance to properly assess the team and the squad once they come yeah. back so he can properly understand working with the um the um the director of recruitment or whatever the job title is um Richard what, Hughes yeah, yeah Richard Hughes are what yeah. they need um he also said that or Liverpool have also briefed that as August moves on the activity will perhaps ramp up a bit is what they actually the words they actually used and that then the idea was also to be opportunistic yeah, this yeah. is what this is directly what um, was being reported, and there were ch- situations where they were they were seeing if players were available, and if they were, they were trying to get them if they fitted what slot wanted. Mm. But those ones haven't happened. Anthony Gordon, uh, Zuba Mendy, um, they're the two names that have been mentioned. Um, I, I'm pretty sure they I went after Lenny Euro as well. Um, but United got him. Yeah, I they mean, did. And, and, yeah, you know, you've got a question of man's judgment if he's choosing Man United over Liverpool at this point. But there you go. But that might also have been the thing that City have done to United, where they pretend to be into him. Yeah. Then we're like, oh, we'll have him then. Yeah. <laughs> there <Right>. you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've offered a billion for him. <laughs> have you? Right. right Two billion. billion. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think it's it's um it's also a case of um 
of, of waiting and seeing. And it is worth remembering as well. Like there's some key players at Liverpool who are out of contract this year. Mm. I mean, well, yeah, so. I, I suppose importantly, like Trent. Importantly yeah. as well, they've got um, they had a fair few injuries last year. And they also, they're not afraid to uh, pull the cord on January signings. I think they're one of the few clubs recently mm. who've been able to do that quite well. Mm. So I suppose, yeah, it, it kind of, it, as you say, like we might, it might develop further as um, September goes on. But yeah, it's just a little bit odd, especially because it does seem to be that like Zubamendi happened to realise where he's lived basically most of his life. Yeah, didn't they like put together a presentation about the food of San, yeah. San Sebastian, the but club, like, and it's like... <laughs> this has been going on since the Euros, yeah. yeah. So if you're Liverpool, like regardless of whether you're involved in it or just a support, you're like, fucking hell, just look out the window, mate. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? That, yeah. Why are you wasting our time? Well, uh, like apparently um, the club insisted that he would need to personally go to the La Liga headquarters in Madrid to submit the sum. <laughs> for the release clause. For the release clause. Yeah, I don't, which I don't which understand seems that. very disrespectful for a player who's been there all his life. Yeah. There's your suitcase. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, was it like in Breaking Bad where he has to write that, that storage unit out? It's, it's, like, a, it's like a child says, so like, right, I'm leaving home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go on then. We've given, you, we've given you in pennies. <laughs> I tried to leave home when I was about seven. Right. Uh, and um, I was angry about that's something obviously yeah. uh, and uh, and then I had to realise that I had to go back and ask my mum if I could um, for permission to cross the main road it's a good point actually yes. she, said, <laughs> she said no right so I abandoned the whole thing yeah okay well uh, it's good that you still had respect for the rules and regs the T's and C's of your contract yeah. with your mum I think you know you've got to be, you've got to play, you've got to play with a straight back <laughs> and, you know, you, you've got, if you've got some serious concerns about the running of the household as a seven year old yeah. you still have got to respect the, um, the institutions uh, you said there's yeah. a process about the Falklands <laughs> No, nah, this would have been like 1987. Okay, right. <laughs> long, long time after that. All right, fair. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, Newcastle United have also had a fairly quiet window. They've, as discussed, released Paul Dummett, Matt Ritchie, Loris Curris, and Jeff Hendrick. Uh, they have submitted a third bid for Gehi at uh, Palace. 60 million. Yeah. Is there value in the market, Luke Moore? For Uncle Mark. For Uncle Mark. I like the way you describe that they've had a quiet window and they've released Paul Dummett, Matt Ritchie, Loris Carius and Jeff Hendrick. Like, almost like the reintroducing to the wild of like a gentle mammal. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. At dawn, you know, where everything's calm. <laughs> everything's calm. And just quietly release them back into the wild. Near a water source. Yeah, you just quietly drop Matt Ritchie off. Uh, um, <laughs> Matt Ritchie is never getting Gosport, dropped off Gosport quietly. Gosport bus station <laughs> on the Gosport side of the harbour. An eagle immediately sweeps down and picks up Hendrick. Yeah. <laughs> 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 is it like those t- those little turtles that try to get to the water where they've just been oh, born yeah. out of the eggs? Oh, do you remember that, uh, oh, why am I forgetting the name? You know, um, Planet Earth? Yeah, uh, with the penguins, where they yeah. throw themselves into the rocks, like that. Yeah, Paul possibly Jeff like Hendrick. that. Paul Dummett, definitely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Dummett's one of those little turtles. He just drowns instantly. Yeah, he's just, trying to, oh. just trying to clear the mountain with a how powerful header. <laughs> he knows, <laughs> he knows no other way. All of a sudden, um, Stephen Taylor just <laughs> just drops off the cliff, <laughs> <laughs> pretending he's been hit in the head. Well, he's, is he still managing Rembrandt? There was that video at the back end of last season where he came out of a big SUV. Oh yeah, in, the, in the big Middle reveal. East it was like a big Tar, reveal. Yeah. And in a very, very tight uh, suit, indeed. Yeah, he's he's, um, he's still currently the um, head coach of Alcabilla. Tick fucking talk, baby. All right, well, coming up in the second half of the Football Ramble, an early escape in the Champo. Yeah, and and I know we're not experts. Uh, You know, we're not doctors. We're not scientists. um, But... (laughs) <laughs> that's it I, I was very much expecting something after that pregnant pause did bit, you see so, yeah. have you seen what's happening um, uh, down in, down with, with, with the lads who've gone completely Tonto oh Tonto the, the lads who've gone absolutely um, have they gone Tonto or Cuckoo do you reckon I don't know wild, I've heard going Tonto wild well, conspiracy theories the, the, the men of football who've gone wild with conspiracy le- theories Normally, as you guys listening will have worked out by now, because a lot of you complain about it, and there is a Patreon if you don't like it, um, <laughs> it costs a pretty penny to advertise on the Ramble these days. It certainly does. So I, it's not. I, I do this. I don't do this lightly. What I'm about to do here and give a free plug to an mm. event that I think everyone here mm. would be interested in, and it's called Football and Facts. Football and Facts. Um, Illustration. Bra- ta- yeah. yeah nice. Tagline: An evening with football legends, uh, and um, the Concord Club. Why is it always happening in Southampton? That's a good point. <laughs> well, it is happening in Southampton. <laughs> the Concord Club in Eastleigh, part of Southampton. Matt Letizia, Ricky Lambert, Joey Barton, hosted by AJ Roberts. Uh, enjoy an evening of football facts at 7pm on the 16th of September. Um, 
yeah, they're probably just going to be talking a bit about football and then a bit about facts. Right, OK. Yeah. Well, um, well, speaking of great live events, uh, if you want to see some more toxic, swivel-headed lunatics, uh, remember to get your, <laughs> your, your tickets for Football Ramble Time Tunnel. Yeah, there'll be no facts at Time Tunnel. No, yeah. <laughs> there'll the, barely the, be any football. Really. Yeah. The Time tun- Tunnel is round, though, so yeah. uh, we, we are able to admit that. Uh, yes, Football Ramble Time Tunnel will be happening at the London Palladium next month. It's our biggest, funniest and most legally sound show to date. <laughs> so get involved. When you stick your head over that parapet in a big, big venue like the Palladium, you really have to be lawyered. Um, but if you're sitting there on your keister wondering uh, <laughs> wondering what our Ramble Live show is all about, then listen to yesterday's Ramble Live throwback. It features some of our very favourite moments from our last theatre tour back in 2019, pre-troubles. And uh, <laughs> and it's uh, the perfect amuse-bouche before September. Listen to that and then get your tickets to footballramblelive.com. That's footballramblelive.com. Um, before we move on to um, some other stories... Uh, if you want this clarification, uh, producer Finn uh, very kindly put this into the document. As Zlatan Ibrahimovic pretended to be a police officer to arrest someone he and his friend thought was a sex buyer. It turned out to be a priest trying to help the sex <laughs> workers. Oh, yeah, trying to help them. William Gladstone-esque, yeah. that old saw, etc., yeah. mm-hmm. etc. Yeah. 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 Well, what do you make of that? Um, he means well. About the, 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 ch- the church? What do you make about people the trying to take... The church or the man or the state? Take, what, do you, what, do you, what do you make about of people trying to take the law in their own hands? If you see way? somebody soliciting sex on the side of the street, presumably, um, how you have to have access to a police officer's uniform. Yeah. So it's all a bit Dwight Schrute for me. It's all it a, a bit, bit Dwight yeah. Schrute. It's all yeah. a bit he shouldn't have access readily or otherwise to a Smithy's policeman costume. What do we think about the priest who was just trying to help the sex workers? The priest may have access, had access to a priest's costume. <laughs> it, how, and how many levels do we go down? Costume. costume. Yeah. yeah, a priest's costume. Yeah. You can get them from Smithy's, can't you? Congratulations, you've, you've qualified as a priest. <laughs> I take it you're excited to see your costume. Yeah. <laughs> Dry ice coming out of a little cupboard. Lovely. I've got some ideas. No, no. Uh, After over a decade, lads, uh, Garth Crooks will no longer be picking the BBC's Premier League Team of the Week. It's the end of an era. It's massive. What is Garth going to do on Crooksford's Day, which is a day that he invented because he refuses to play by the rules that sits between Thursday and Friday. (laughs) That's when he writes the team. He's playing a day out of position. That's that's, that's how passionate he is about it. He does does days out of position. He eats his lunch at 3.50. (laughs) It's not having than any of the rules. <laughs> and if he but sees the rules, he's eating them. He's been replaced by Troy Deeney, hasn't he? Yeah, not an improvement for me. <laughs> Anyone who's heard his output on anything. I do like Deeney. Um, I do I feel like... All right, but I, yeah. But I do feel... And I say that because he would bat at all of us. He would, oh, yeah. At the same yeah. time, yeah. using one of us as his fist. But half of his anecdotes are about knowing people who can batter people and well, being I, a batter I, himself. I yeah. met we, should do more of that. we should do more of that stuff. We'd yeah. get less grief. <laughs> yeah, <we>? yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I met Troy Deeney at an NFL London launch event. Lovely. Lovely Where's that fella. come from? Where's the NFL say, London launch event? That's where it was. At Spurs. Yeah, at Spurs right. Stadium. And he was lovely. The the thing I would say is, uh, you know, judging by his output, mm. he'd probably have himself up front every single game. So he's got <laughs> 10 positions to play with there. <laughs> yeah. He does talk a good game about his yeah. career, doesn't he? But the he, game he, that we do, did recently watch him. He fired a few um, a few fucking missives at Crooks. Did he? It wasn't, it wasn't the most respectful <laughs> of handovers. <laughs> it wasn't like... He was like, I'm going to do things a bit differently. This is a direct quote from the article announcing this. Right. I am going to do things a bit differently in my team I promise players will always be in their correct positions for starters oh wow well the, the you know people were tweeting like the the best of quote unquote of um, Garth Crooks's teams of the week um, some highlights Arnautovic at right wing back <laughs> Uh, yeah. The Bruyne was he holding midfielder. Um, <laughs> he played. <laughs> he basically played a Christmas tree formation. Martial as the point, the star, if you will. Star, if you will. Yeah. Um, Callum Wilson, Odi Nogalo, Jamie Vardy on the right, Sunderland <laughs> in on the left, and holding the middle, Dimitri Payet. <laughs> So basically six forwards. Yeah. yeah. What, in one team? Or is that just over the years? In one team? No, no. In, no, in one, one team? team. Over in one the years. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was like, like he did that if, like once or twice. But do we, do we almost, is it one of those situations where it, he was derided for this and he was a bit of a social media legend for mm. it? Do did we, he lean into it? Are yeah. We, are we going to miss point. it now? Right. No, because, no, no. No, but the thing is, Vish, why do we, why the BBC need to be doing a Premier League team of the week? Who cares? Yeah. They do it on match of the day anyway, wouldn't they? Just do it on match of the day if you care about it that much. Yeah, I would so like, I would like to know how much that's costing. I like the idea that Garth Crooks had a little bit of the BBC empire carved away to himself. He'd do what he wanted. 
Probably had a yes. few drinks doing it. No one stopped On the world him. service at 2am. Yeah, I like yeah. it. You know, is it office space where basically he realises that he can get away with doing fuck all mm. and still getting paid and he get, ends up getting promoted like, <laughs> to a point until, until he's promoted so far that someone realises. Yeah. And I wonder if it's when all the bollocks teams came came out and, and it went viral, someone at the BBC and the director general was like, Where's this? Yeah. <laughs> Where's this on our site? And then, and then the next, that's almost certainly what happened. And the next step, no, and the BBC was like, well, we're going to have to get rid of him. Mm. And they would have gone, hey, he's on a watertight two million a year contract <laughs> yeah. for five years. <laughs> yeah. You he's know, he's to just on. He's, he's, he's on old fashioned BBC money. He used yeah. to do a bit of football focus, didn't he? That was his major yeah. kind of like, <laughs> he's, he was a pundit on football focus. It's just focus. the nodding he's a, clip. He's, yeah. a, he's a meme for the beat for VT as well. He's yeah. yeah. saying the N word to Richard Little John. Like, it's all yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. That's why we know. Wait, yeah. What's he going to do next? I mean, it's a plate that says, I'm staring right now, the Football Round HQ. On a spare seat. On a spare me. seat, yeah. That'll teach shit. I thought you were going to say Marcus should do it. Garth. Marcus should be the... Uh... I'm, I don't care about Marcus. He's Garth fine. He's present. got a job. What's Garth going to do next? I guess he's 66. So, I mean, that, that's retirement that's for no me. Age. That's for, no age. That's for, no for, age for, for, for a great contributor. The World Cup year as well. A great contributor to the football milieu. <laughs> well, speaking of football milieu, uh, apparently there's going to be a new a Twitter account, X account, uh, the new Premier League Match Centre, uh, which launched yesterday. Its purpose is to provide live updates from Stockley Park, including information directly from the VAR hub. We will issue near live updates on operational matters from all matches, including clarification on refereeing and VAR with the aim of increasing transparency. Transparency. Uh, I imagine with uh, Elon Musk's stringent uh, kind of terms of service agreements with the user, there'll be several parody accounts oh, of course will. being Straight set away. up right now. And you won't be able to tell which Eight ones are real and which ones. There's 50 of them. <laughs> also, the number of community notes on the bottom of every yeah. 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 that comes out. Uh, actually. actually, it was a panel. It's, <laughs> great, it's great timing from the Premier League, just mm. as literally on the very week where people are saying enough is enough and leaving X in their droves, <laughs> Premier League, all right, I think this place is popular. Enough. <laughs> Let's get stuck in. Yeah, that delicious yeah. Trump. Till up to that party where the house is on fire and yeah. the police have turned up. Yeah. yeah, do we need? I mean, it is going to be great content for the ramble. Mm -hmm. What's bad good for, for the goose? Yeah, what's good for the goose can be great for the gander. I think um, it's good for that point of view. I cannot help myself but seeing this existentially though is just a terrible development. Yeah, no. Well, there's almost they, they can't fucking they can't fucking do the VAR properly. They're not going to do the fucking announcements for the VAR properly. I don't, I don't want more transparency. I want you to brick wall it up. I don't. Yeah, I don't want to see, <laughs> yeah. don't see yeah. totally. I don't want any more explanations. Yeah. There were like really nice restaurants in London which do like nose to tail dining, right. and it's you know beautiful. Mm. But there comes a point with nose to tail dining where I don't need need to see the animal's face. I, right. I don't okay, want to see the yeah. arsehole. Yeah, all, the, all, the, all that. The tail's yeah. near the arsehole. Yeah. I don't want to see it. The tail's near but the arsehole. There, there's transparency. Different in, side of the animal, but yeah. And there's transparent. Depends on the animal. There's transparency <laughs> in this, like, do you want to hear about how much I've been drinking again? Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, I don't. Yeah. Join I want my sub stack. I don't want transparency. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do, you want, do you want a free month on my sub stack? No, I don't. <laughs> Matt, Matt Goodwin, I'm not interested. Um, and I think this is one of those. Just get it right, yeah. and there won't be any need for it, will no. there? Yeah. Just get I mean, it right. You are preempting a terrible season of VAR, yes. aren't yeah. you, really? That, that, that does speak yeah. to that, doesn't it? Because also it's a little bit like, um, right, if we start this account, all the sludge of like people calling us a cunt, mm. all the slurry of people <laughs> yeah. calling us a nonce, that can be funneled, <laughs> that can be funneled this way, yeah. can't it? Yeah. yeah, or if I pay eight quid... I can community note the Premier League calling them a nonce. Yeah. That's what it's going to be like. It's going to yeah. be official nonce calling. I mean, you imagine most football, like, like Arsenal around the corner will be on a hot, the front of print on Holloway Road getting their memoed, um, oh, like time. the uh, note paper. Oh, yeah. To sort of and, say. And, and, and the process behind this for the Premier League is they've sat down mid or sort of before the season starts and said, look, we need to be better at this. What kind of things can we do? And all the options have come across probably as really hard and complicated. <laughs> at the end, Howard Webb's assistant's gone, could do a Twitter. And they've gone, yeah, <laughs> do a Twitter. yeah we'll do a Twitter. Yeah. I'll get it done by the end of the day. And there's a press release can go out easy. It'll look like we're doing stuff. Yeah, it's it's gonna VAR it at gmail.com to set it up. It's gonna... <laughs> yeah. yeah. What if anyone's got that? Yeah. yeah. Well, but... people are going to people are gonna hack it. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if someone hacks it this season. Oh, you reckon? What, yeah, the Twitter yeah. account? Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. Go on. Come on, get involved. Yeah, is I think it... you can buy off the peg kind of hacking these is days. Is it a crime? I believe so, yeah. yeah. Don't do it. <laughs> it's a crime. Don't, do it. You, you've we don't got, talk about it here. You've got the um, computer nerd wrist support on at the moment. I do, yeah. Like, yeah. It's, it's if anyone looks like a hacker, it's you. It's not RSI. It's uh, a, a bigger boy kicked a football at my arm. 
And yeah. but the problem is I run um, with a rather sort of limp wrist. You've got a Raheem Sterling about you. Got a bit of oh, yeah. Raheem Sterling about him, and yeah. uh, and and a, a bigger boy kicked a ball at it, and it, uh, it really hurt. Uh, well, in the Premier League, it's all kicking off in VAR style, uh, but there are no VAR um, Twitter accounts in the Championship, Luke. No, very sad. So it's a hallowed, yeah. green and pleasant land. We've oh. already seen a managerial exit in the Championship. No one can keep their job for more than five minutes. Good point, <laughs> it, it would be too busy. You'd yeah. need to have three social media teams yeah. on Monday. Preston uh, announced they had parted ways with their manager Ryan Law I imagine he flew away because he does look like the eagle out the Muppets um, <laughs> the, the club statement said following discussions that took place on Sunday August 11th it was mutually agreed that now is an appropriate time for a change to be made it's good stuff first game of the season get him out mm. it's interesting we should probably point out um that the person who made the statement about Ryan Lowe mm. was um, a little fellow you might have heard of uh, called Peter Ridsdale. Yes, please. Mm. Um, and, he, and his quote, he, he, he insists that Ryan Lowe himself had asked to leave. And the direct quote is, he told me he wanted a break, <laughs> a change. We didn't initiate it. Right. It's quite a tall tale, that. Yeah. It's, 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 unless, it's, unless it's something going on that I don't know about, which is perfectly understandable if it is, mm. and if it's a personal issue, then fair enough, and I wish him mm. all the best. I don't think it's that likely outside of that scenario that that, that managers who have just done a whole pre-season mm. are going to say, yeah, I fancy a change after the first game. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't Plymouth at Sheffield Wednesday bad. They lost 2-0 at Sheffield United, fine. Um, it's a very, very strange set of timings. I'd have to mm. listen to second tier to know exactly what happened, though. Have a listen. Um, on Monday night, uh, Scott Parker's Burnley crushed Luton Town 4-1 at Kenilworth Road. Parker was wearing a beautiful $1,000 bomber jacket and he had some lovely long hair as well. He just gets better. I mean, it was more than $1,000, wasn't it? it was I think it was like one, one, $1,300 or something. Well, yeah. that was 30% more than $1,000. Yeah. I'd steal things. <laughs> don't I don't know. pay the full price for anything. How much is a pint of milk? I don't know. Yeah, I'll don't. buy him in fours. Um, but, I mean, <laughs> Rob Edwards. I've got and a cow. Rob Edwards and Scott Parker. Yeah. Uh, have you been Marcus on the farm? Um, <laughs> Scott Parker and uh, Rob Edwards. Lovely, lovely. I'm just watching. Yeah, lovely. Oh, big beautiful. Time. The, only, beautiful. the only thing you can say about Scott Parker's jacket is that if he had a little bit of self-awareness, he'd be wearing a Parker. It's a good it? point, actually. Yeah, Parker's it's too hot that time of year for me. In the winter. <laughs> yeah. I think it's too hot for a bomber jacket, to be quite frank. I, look, I don't get how thin it was. He looks great with his hair like that. He does look great. Yeah, yeah we've seen it before. It's, it's it's thick. It's lustrous. It's just... He looks like... He's the a very model. The fourth most recognisable member of a 90s boy band. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's who's, who's lasted the longest. Yeah, he's not the main one. He's still one. around now. Yeah. He's not a yeah, Timberlake. Yeah, yeah. On, on, yeah. <laughs> on, uh, on Twitter, um, uh, Twitterer by the name of uh, Karen Fasakali, Vers- Fasakali um, like Derek Fasakali, uh, pointed out that uh, Fulham did have, if you work for Fulham, you do have a 50% off black card for Harrods. So he probably oh. bought it cheap. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, he keeps nice. that forever because he's not at Fulham now. No. No, you give it, I would know that it, gets, give it, up, de- uh, it gets deactivated. Really? Oh, yeah. You sound like a man who knows about his uh, Harry Black know that? I think people have talked about it before. Like right. Fulham, I think recently as well. I think maybe Jimmy Bullard talks about like him when he left Fulham going back in there to see if it worked and it didn't. Oh, really? Because I yeah. remember, um, I think when Kevin Keegan and Peter Beasley were managing Fulham. Um, Bloody hell, what's that? Let, let that breathe. Dream. Kevin, let that Ke- breathe. Kevin Keegan team. and... Kevin Keegan and Peter Beasley. Beardo. Beardo. Wasted on those two. Beard, well, yeah. Beardo wasn't, didn't seem to be doing a lot of work. He used to just go and get the shopping in. Apparently, Peter Beasley used to just go into Sainsbury's and, and, and buy all the food for Kevin Keegan and him because they lived in a flat together, which is hilarious, right? So good. And, uh, and then... Just as they were Get away from like the stove, about, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. about a month away from the end of their contract with Fulham, um, that they obviously left. Um, uh, Kevin Keegan pointed out that they had a free, uh, they just had free food and free drink that you could get from Harrods. They lived in the apartment that was ab- above Harrods, and Peter Beasley wasn't going downstairs because yeah. Kevin Keegan had told him about the free food and drink from Harrods. Yeah. He was going over the road to Sainsbury's and buying it himself. Oh my God. What kind of household is that? What Kevin kind Keegan? of household? Like, I'm imagining bottom. Oh, it's similar sort of bottom. area as well. It's, it's Keegan, as you've Vish said, it's Keegan burning himself on the stove every day. <laughs> it's Peter Beasley falling out with the cleaner because he said something unacceptable. And, and that's <laughs> They are, it's like Richie and Eddie in 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 bottom. It the, really the worst bit of Peter is, is um, quite abject, close to Hammersmith. Even abject racism is uh, the fact that he told someone to speak English. Yeah, I mean, come on, just play the uh, YouTube clip of him on. trying to do the uh, rap on world in motion. <laughs> That's the biggest. That's what you call that. English, is ever crying out loud. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, this is a great story, and it's the sort of story you just don't hear about often enough. Conor Gallagher was supposed to be leaving Chelsea for Atletico Madrid earlier in the week, but things have gone rather awry. Um, Chelsea were trying to buy 
uh, Samuel Amorodian, and they couldn't because Atletico needed to make a sale before they can buy Gallagher. They're now trying to sell João Felix to Chelsea. Gallagher basically has been holed up in a hotel for five days. <laughs> He's back now, but he... He's basically spent a lot of spent five days uh, waiting for his medical to happen, uh, but he's just been st- stuck in stasis, stuck in kind of no man's it's land. Not, worse, but it's not a bad place to be stuck, though, is it? The thing about this is, I feel really bad for Conor Gallagher mm. because he is in the he's in a position now where all the other young players at Chelsea have hoarded currently mm. will be in in a few years time mm. where they'll be used as like make weights in these kind of deals yeah um and it's weird to see like a guy who loads of people wanted yeah. like last year yeah, yeah. he got locked ha- into the being, wrong shooter didn't yeah he? being in this situation where he's got to wait in this hotel while Chelsea decide whether they want to buy the player they already had and decided not to buy in Joao mm. Felix yeah. yeah which is weird it's is, so is this going to ruin Chelsea's mad um, close season I've, signing I it's already give, been ruined I, yeah <laughs> I mean I, could, but I couldn't give a shit about that I kind of there, there's an element of like duty of care there isn't there not, yeah. like to, maybe not to like have you, you know, seen that table and whatever. <laughs> they're yeah. sitting on the floor Vish I suppose, he's, I suppose yeah he's Got, he's got somewhere to sit. <laughs> but yeah, there's there's an element of like, um, I don't know, like just talent wasted. Mm. Like regardless of whether you care about the person or not, it's like, it seems he, so mad. He's it's just something that Bosman was designed, like, you know, the Bosman rule was designed Yeah, but maybe he's it's just getting the Gallagher rule. Maybe he's just staying for... <laughs> what, no, man, no player should have to spend more than five days in any in hotel. In a hotel, yeah, <laughs> waiting to start. He's, he's turned down a contract though, hasn't it, Chelsea? He wants to leave. Yeah, because he knows the situation. Yeah. He like, looks around him and he's like, what? what? Look, this is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they just like, it's like every single... Tried to sell him last year. It's like every single person at Chelsea's done like double shifts on the buying course in Premier League education and yeah. no one attended None the selling, selling one. one yeah. yeah, no one knows what to do. <laughs> it's, it's, I honestly think, you know, and we're going to do our prediction show, I think, aren't we, for, for YouTube later. Mm. But um, So it's worth checking out when it comes out. But um, I honestly think that Chelsea could have a really, really bad start to the season. It could start right. to go really wrong. And the problem with them is that the way the ownership is and the way they seem to conduct themselves as a club is if it does go wrong, they don't seem to know how to stay the course. They don't seem to know how to kind of, we're we're really confident in the person we've got. It's going to be fine. We'll carry on. It's so chaotic. It seems like the way they're set up is that everything that goes wrong will just be exacerbated. Yeah, Yeah. And, yeah. and, And this stuff... Despite the fact that it's probably maybe Gallagher's team pissed off briefing out that he's been treated pretty shoddily and that mm. all this stuff gets out. Because you have seen in certain transfers, they just happen, right? And no one really knows it's happened until it's happened. There's a reason why Chelsea leaked like a fucking sieve and um, it doesn't look good for them. And the whole thing just seems quite chaotic. The Jao Felix aspect of it is particularly very, mm. makes it very, very odd. Mm. But it, because you, I understand situations change, but as you say, Vish, they had him. Yeah. So yeah. what's 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 meaningfully changed in such a short amount of time? Like it, it just seems to me that the people in football, and there aren't many of them, that actually can do business well, just seeing Chelsea is such a soft touch is unbelievable. Yeah, because obviously like <laughs> Chelsea need to get something off Atletico Madrid to ratify this Gallagher mm. deal to make it like financially viable yeah. for them. And they've looked at their squad and he's the only one that they're like, Well, we could I suppose we could pay a lot of money for him. We, yeah. we would be up for that. Like it's absolutely wild, isn't it? Just give the money Mad. to yourself. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I differ with Luke. I think that um, Chelsea are going to start the, um, the season really well simply because um, there's so many players in the changing room. It's like altitude training because there's, uh, there's not there's enough no oxygen. oxygen in the air. Everyone just breathing out the carbon dioxide. There's no but, oxygen but, yeah. at all. You've got to fight. Yeah. It's a survivor of the fittest, basically. It certainly is. If you look at the amount of activity, I mean, it's just it's just. Oh, but, it's just uh, but it's not even about football. It's very much about asset management, isn't it? It's, Seems just, like it's it. just kind of like grabbing yeah. who you can. It's not even a, it's, it's not about football and you worry about where this leaves the game you leave the Premier League and this has to, something has to change because this is ridiculous let me put it this way then just the quick, disruptors of a Chelsea quick, a quick question for Vish before we wrap um, Opta do their <clears throat> predictive final league positions right and they came out this week and um, it's obviously a load of boffins crunch a load of data and Chelsea it's not a super computer is it no don't worry John Cross is fine <laughs> it come out that Chelsea will most likely finish fourth. I can't see that at all. Well, that's just purely based on how well they started, how well they finished last season. Because yeah. they looked really good last season at points. And changed the manager. More consistent, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, they changed the manager. They brought in twice as many players. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I can't see it either. Yeah. Yeah. Two, well, two spots above United. 
Cole Palmer. I can't see that. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't see the many people. It'll just be further down. Yeah. That, that was a good picture. Thank you for watching a clip from the Football Ramble podcast. Uh, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss an upload. A single upload. Don't miss out on the uploads. The uploads are important.